talk to our political correspondent, Tom Harwood. Morning to you, Tom. I mean, it is all about levelling up then. Is that the main focus of this conference? That certainly is. Of course, we're now into the second half of this parliament, over 12 years of Conservative-led government in this country. And the Conservative Party that is gathering here today in Blackpool is looking ahead to the next elections, the local elections, of course, in May, but also that future general election that could be two years away. Uh, this is what it's all about, gathering the party together, talking about what can be delivered, but also organisationally. How can this election-winning machine go on to win again? It's interesting being here in Blackpool. This is, we're in Winter Gardens here, which is the site of a lot of Conservative Party history. Back in 1977, this is where William Hague, a 16-year-old William Hague, first gave a famous speech to Conservative Party conference. This is where Margaret Thatcher first delivered a, a speech at a conference after winning the 1983 general election. And this is the place where David Cameron gave his famous 2005 speech with no notes, which put him on course to becoming Tory party leader and then, of course, prime minister. There's a lot of Conservative Party history here at Winter Gardens in Blackpool, but it's also about this new sense of a northern-focused Conservative party. The party has uh, two MPs uh, around here now, something that hasn't been the case for many, many, many years. So a rejuvenated party, uh, shaking off the scars of the torrid times of Partygate, trying to come together and looking ahead to the future electoral events. I mean, do, do you think the party is united? I mean, as you say, Partygate does seem to be sort of heading into, into the history books a little bit, though it, it, it may resurface. But is, is there a sense that backbenchers there are satisfied with what the PM is now doing? I think there's an, an enormously greater sense of unity now than there was even a few weeks ago. We've seen, for example, the uh, leader of the Scottish Conservative Party, Douglas Ross, retract his call for the Prime Minister to resign. Uh, another prominent backbench MP, Andrew Bridgen, is withdrawing his letter to Sir Graham Brady as well, calling for there to be a leadership election. It seems like the party is more united now than it has been in some time, although that is up from a very low bar. Uh, of course, at the time of national unity, indeed Western unity, looking at all of the problems that the world is facing right now, particularly Ukraine, I think that the Conservative Party thinks this Prime Minister has performed fairly well when it comes to Ukraine, certainly better than some continental European powers, which were a little slow on the uptake when it came to recognising the threat from Russia and providing defensive military aid to Ukraine. Uh, I think to some extent there is a greater sense of unity around all that, although forever hanging over the Prime Minister's neck like a sword of Damocles is, of course, that investigation. It hasn't gone away, that Met Police investigation. That may well report back in, uh, in the future months. And when that does, the question is, will Partygate rear its ugly head again? It doesn't seem like it now, but never say never in politics. Oh, indeed. Uh, so, sorry, Bev. I was just going to say, it's, it's a, I mean, it's going to be a strong conference for the Foreign Secretary. It's going to be a pretty strong conference, one would imagine, for the Health Secretary. But what about the Chancellor? Mm. Because he has come under a lot of fire. This whole cost of living crisis, which is not going away, th there's a lot of pressure on him to take some action. There certainly is. Actually, Rishi Sunak is speaking at 11 a.m. today, so we can expect in his speech to hear something about what we may be hearing on Wednesday when he delivers his spring statement, that mini-budget where he's expected to produce measures to deal with that cost-of-living crisis. Certainly a huge amount of pressure on the Chancellor today, speaking, as I say, at 11, so we'll listen out for what he has to say in terms of anything new, in terms of help for families and businesses across the UK. But he's not the only person speaking today. There's a whole raft of cabinet ministers speaking today. Jacob Rees-Mogg, also the uh, Brexit Opportunities Minister, will be speaking along with Grant Shapps, the cha party chairman Oliver Dowden as well, and Health Secretary Sajid Javid. There's a huge roster of speeches from cabinet ministers, but also from ordinary party members, because of course this is an event about the voluntary party getting together and organising for those future electoral events.